Me too. Not gonna lie. Me too. Mom and dad are jumping for joy here at Chase Field. Wow! Going along the right field line. And Rizzo on the ledge. She's got it! Oh, what a play! <laughs> well, the bobblehead company. We got the tarp catch. Now we got the ledge catch. Both against the Milwaukee Brewers. Give them the gold glove right now. From the borough of Queens in Flushing, now, New York, welcome to beautiful York. City Field. Today it's the finale of this four-game set between the St. Louis Cardinals and the New York Mets. It's baseball on the show, and it's coming up next. Noah Syndergaard is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Mets. What do we need to know here, HR? Well, Matt, he's been really good. He's got two wins in the last three starts. His team's had an opportunity to be in the game deep and late, and he's walked away, like I said, with two wins. So let's see if he's able to get three wins and four starts after this out. And that'll bring up Oledmus Diaz. Couple of hits for him in four trips to the plate last night. Fastball, strike three called, and he's caught looking to begin the afternoon. Now a chance to look at the starting nine for the visiting St. Louis Cardinals. Danny, who stands out to you? Well, I'm a little concerned about the struggles we're seeing from Dexter Fowler. He's really struggled to produce runs. No RBIs in this series so far, and he's a guy they count on to put runs on the board to help them win games. Here's Dexter Fowler now. Career numbers versus Syndergaard. Hitless in three at bats. One two pitch coming to Fowler. To two balls and two strikes now. Our game time temperature here to start play a balmy 86 degrees at first pitch. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. The main job of the number one and two hitters is to set the middle of the order up with an opportunity to do some damage. So when you strike both of them out, you're putting yourself in a pretty good position to make it through the teeth of the lineup without a whole lot of stress. Here's Matt Carpenter. And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. Two out, nobody on. And that's high and off the plate, two and one. These Mets herald as they take the field here today. They've run their win streak up to six in a row now, and they're really playing some inspired baseball. Well, Matt, it's nice to wake up in a day game and know your ace is going to be on the mound. It's just one of those win days. Seems like you got to the park early, and before you know it, the game's going to be over, and you're going to have a W. But pulled in at the hot corner, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Cardinals. Cardinals zero, Mets coming to bat. It's a rematch of the 2006 NLCS, and it's on the show. Mike Leak will be towing the rubber for the Cardinals. Harold, what do you got? Well, Matt, he's one of these guys that's going to battle. He sticks around the game long enough where you pick up a win like he did last outing. Only giving up one run, but he stayed in the game, and he got the W. Maybe we'll see that type of performance from him today because he's that type of pitcher. In is Curtis Granderson. He comes in currently second on the team in home runs. Count is full. Here's the pitch. And a good battle continues as this ball's chopped foul at the plate, and the count remains three and two. The three, two, one more time. As anticipated, here's a ground ball now to the right side. And he will whip this one over to first in time for the out. With a moment here in Flushing Meadows, let's meet the Mets. What do you think they need to do to keep this winning streak rolling, Harold? I think the key to this game, Matt, is working the count. I mean, you've got a guy that's really dominant on the mound, right? So you got to work his pitch count. And if you work the pitch count, now all of a sudden you might get into that bullpen. If they get in the bullpen, they're going to win this game. Striding into the box as Dribble Cabrera. And you can see his home road splits there. He has not fared very well in front of the home crowd, oddly enough. Bases are empty, one man out. Hey. 
there's a change up over the outside corner and there are our umpires for this one working balls and strikes will be Mr. Daryl Parker. Now Matt Daryl Parker's one of those guys you're going to take him to dinner you know what he's going to order steak and potatoes he is basic he's going to make sure he does not make a mistake no sushi no lasagna he's not going off the board steak and potatoes man right here are consistent chopped weakly to the left throw gets him two down batting third left fielder Yo. Into the box now, Yoenis Cespedes. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. Leak gets the sign on his way with the three and two. Hard on the ground towards short. Pro on to Carpenter gets him, and that ends the inning. Mets go down one, two, three. We are still scoreless. Now batting, Rendell Gritchick. He's currently tied for second place on the team in home runs. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Called strike over the outside part of the plate. Pretty lucky to get away with that one. There's not a situation ever where you want to throw a high changeup, so I think he'll try to make an adjustment with the next one he throws. High in the air out to center field. Under it is Granderson, one away. Well, let's take a look at the Mets defense brought to you by Majestic. In this day and age, when teams are moving all over the place playing the shift, these guys are old school, very traditional. You don't see the shift applied very often this club. Coming to the plate now, Stephen Piscotti. And this is a good looking matchup for him here. As you can see, he's hit lefties quite a bit better than he has right handers this season. Still looking for our first hit in the ball game. Called strike in a dangerous location there, one and two. Oh, that's for sure going to be a pitch he wants back. You're not going to get many balls right in the wheelhouse from a top-level arm like this. Swing and a flare hit toward right. Conforto shading to his right, two down. Batting six. Second baseman. Colton Wong will stand in. The season batting average comes in down in the 240s. Now here's the pitch. That's lifted the other way out to left. Cespedes is there. And the inning is over. So nothing happening this time around. On now to the bottom of the second. And we are tied nothing nothing. Standing in Michael Conforto is back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out last night's game. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Hit pretty well out to deep left field. Gritchick ranging back, but he can't get to this one. It's off the wall. And the Mets have something going with nobody out. It's a leadoff double. When you play with fire, you have to expect to get burned once in a while. He's about as hot as you can get right now. They continue to pitch to him, and he continues to make them pay. Nice double off the wall here. Here's Neil Walker past battles with Mike Lee 13 base hits in 51 at bats. He also has one home run. A runner at second nobody out. A bullet to first base throw back to the bag and the runners back in time. All right, here's how the cards line up defensively brought to you by Majestic. And I'm looking at Randall Gritchick. You know, for a guy his size, he can motor. He can cover the ground in the outfield, and he's got a strong enough arm. You can play him in right, left, or center.
here's Lucas Duda now. Took an 0 for 4 in the victory last night. Getting a few steps off a second there. Now the pitch. And he takes one off the inside corner for ball two. Harold Reynolds, we take a look at this Cardinals ball club as they enter play here this afternoon. They enter this one off a loss after winning five of seven prior to that. Yeah, Matt, the week hasn't started the way they want it to. I mean, losing the first three games of the week, and then you come into Thursday's game, and you're looking into the weekend. This is a springboard game, the way I look at it. This Thursday shoots you into possibly having a good weekend and walk away with the week being okay. Stepping in now, David Wright. He swings and sends it in the air to right center field. And he dives to make a spectacular catch. What a play there to end the inning. Worth a second look here as this is a beauty to end the inning. Back with more of this Thursday afternoon business person special following this. Back at City Field in Flushing, Queens as we are ready for the third inning in this one. Here's Jed Jerko now. He's the number seven hitter, but he's leading off the third after the first six guys in the lineup have been retired in order. Yeah, it's been a great start to the guy on the mound. It'll be interesting to see if they can find a way to get to this guy before he really settles in. And that slider's almost in the dirt. Well, he's really struggled. I mean, over for the series, but the confidence they have in him, he's still in the lineup. Let's see if he can break out right here. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Strike two at a pitch that catches the outside corner. Frozen with a high fastball there. We'll see if they try to climb the ladder even more on the next pitch. Fastball swung on and missed for the first out. Boy, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. Into the box, Yadier Molina. And this is fouled at the plate. Now the 1 2 coming to Molina. And he struck him out as well. So the bottom of the order providing little resistance here, and there are two away. I like how he worked him backwards for that strike out there. He wasn't showing the fastball early in the at bat, but then went back to back once he had the hitter down in the count. Into the box now, Mike Leak. Chop foul over towards the coaching box. Here's the pitch on two and two. And another foul ball. The two two one more time. Swing and that's hit out of play up into the plaza level. He's just fouling him off till he gets something he wants to hit. Another foul ball and this battle will continue. That's four foul balls in a row. He's battling no doubt. On the eighth pitch of the at bat is the one that finally does it as he wears him down and the inning is over. Three up, three down, three strikeouts. Not too shabby. We play two and a half. No score on the show. Stepping up now, Travis Darno. He brings an average in the 260s into this one. One and two, here it comes. Bat splinters as this is on the ground to first base. And they'll just tag him out along the first base line. Sometimes for a first baseman, the best thing you do is just go ahead and tag the guy like that. Hey, there's a lot more that can go wrong when you try to throw to the pitcher or the second baseman covering. Bottom of inning number three, nothing, nothing our score. That's in there on the outer half, one and two now. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the one-two. Line towards center field. 
But sadly for him, this will head straight to the center fielder as he puts it away without center much fielder. trouble for the second out. Well, this one was squared up pretty good, but just like pitchers give up hits on well-executed pitches, batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. In now, Curtis Granderson. Ah, and he gripped that one a bit too tightly as it broke down and just about got him. Leak into his motion. Here's the one and two. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Gritchick is in his tracks now, and he will make the catch, so that'll do it. Down in order go the Mets. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. Digging in to try it again, Aledmus Diaz. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How do they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. Hot shot on the ground is short. Backhanded. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. Center fielder number 25. Striding in once Dexter. again, Dexter Fowler. Fowler. He's 0 for 1 thus far. 1 2 pitch coming to Fowler. And that is swung on and missed. He's down on strikes. And the first two are retired here to begin inning number four. This guy is really locked in on the bump right now. He's just playing good old fashioned hardball right now. Just rearing back and letting it go. And it seems like this lineup, they don't have an answer for anything he's bringing so far. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. And he just gets a piece there as this is chopped foul. Here's the 1 and 2 delivery. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. 1 2 3 go the Cardinals. On to the bottom of the fourth now, still with no score. Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. He'll start out the proceedings against Mike Leak as we get the inning underway. Two and two count. Here it comes. Softly hit toward the hole. And he'll step on first himself for the out. The left fielder number 52, Yoannis Cespedes. Here's the left fielder, Yoannis Cespedes. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Pitching has the upper hand early as we're scoreless in inning number four. Hit on the ground is short. Throw gets him two down. A right fielder number 30. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Michael Conforto. And then it seems like this starter is just dominating the game right now. Feels like we're seeing a lot of three up three down innings. No doubt about that, Matt. Hey, I've enjoyed watching him go about his business, but I'm also interested. There's a swing and a missile sent out to center field. Back goes Fowler, still ranging back. Gone! So it's a solo shot to dead center, number 10 for him on the year. And the Mets are on the board first, one to nothing. I think it's time to start pitching around this guy. He's hit three home runs already in the series. I'm not sure what more they need to see, but this is not the guy I want to be pitching to right now. Standing in now, Neil Walker. Swing and a line drive, but foul. Another 2 2 offering. And this misses, so that'll fill the count at 3 and 2. 
One run, two hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Lifted the other way out to left center. Grichik is after it. And that retires the side. Fair to say, oh my goodness, that these folks are not headed for a career on Broadway. Back with more of this Thursday afternoon business person special following this. Digging in for his second at bat, Rendell Gritchick. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. That's Hit the target, but this is low, 2 and 1. Well, when you're behind an account like this pitcher is, it's a good time to work in something off speed if you're confident in it. Most hitters are looking for fastball. Starts to go around here, but it doesn't matter. This is strike two anyway. Swinging a soft liner. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. Well, it's still early, but it's also right, worth noting that he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Outfielder Steven Piscotti, the next to hit. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Into the windup, here comes the 0 2 pitch. And he swings on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. That's probably not what he wants to do with two strikes right there with the fastball. He is fortunate he just fouled it off. Again, he sends it out of play. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Still a little early to start talking about these things. There you go, right there. A big goose egg in that hit column, worth keeping in mind as we get later into the afternoon. Colton Wong will stand in. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Cardinals have been held out of the hit column here. Down the first baseline, but this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Two outs, two strikes, and we're in the fifth inning, and he's got one pitch, I think, away from getting through five. Threw it right past him, a swing and a miss at the gas, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Cardinals. They trail this one, one to nothing. Back with Harold Reynolds and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian, as the left-handed hitting slugger Lucas Duda starts out the inning. Count is full. Here's the pitch. And this is going to be a foul ball. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Pulled toward right center field. Fowler has a read on it. He's got it one away. The third baseman, number five. David Here's the third baseman, David Wright. Into his motion. Here comes the three and one. And they won't tempt it here with Wright as that pitch misses for ball four. And that hole at that, I feel like he really didn't want to challenge him. And I'm really surprised by that because I think this is a guy in the bottom third of the order. You have to go right after. Called strike two on the cutter, and he's behind in the count now, one and two. Look, Matt, this guy's got a great sinker. Here's the key. He's got a runner on first base. This is where you can get that ground ball double play. Make them chase that hard sinker and hit it to the. Not in time as he steals second. So he's in safely there following the one out steal of second. And with that, we take you to our team leaderboard to display the clubs with the most stolen bases so far this year. And you can see that the Mets are currently best in the senior circuit in that category. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. On the ground to the right side. And that's through into right field for a base hit. 
And the runner from second will stay put at third. So they're runners at the corners now with now one away. Well, they haven't done much today. This is the biggest rally they've had so far. That single moves them now to first and third. And they got a chance to do some damage. They got to take advantage of this opportunity. Into the box, Noah Sindergaard. And they roll the dice with the squeeze, and he gets it down. So they get the out at first, but the run will score on the suicide squeeze. And in the days of three-run homers in nine to eight ball games, you don't see the suicide squeeze executed much anymore. But this right here is a textbook example of getting that bunt down and getting the RBI. And now the Cardinals get the bullpen working here. Both the lefty and a right-hander have stood up. Stepping in now, Curtis Granderson in there and it's even now two and two well you can't fall back any further this team they're playing right now is just too good they're one of the best teams in the league and they capitalize on mistakes you got to get out of this inning if you want to have a chance to win this game now a swing and a hard hit grounder two runs three hits and no errors on the Mets line score so far sinker three and two now for the guy in the mound this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy he's thrown a bunch of pitches and this AB hasn't been any different definitely laboring at the moment and that misses ball four so it's first and second now with two out here now is this Drupal Cabrera it's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point Look into Molina. Now the 1 1. Here's a swing and a ground ball. Come on, Matt. A decent lead at second. Here's the pitch. Hard hit toward the hole. And just past his outstretched glove into left, the base hit. And a good throw will wind up holding that runner at third, so the bases become loaded now with two gone. That was really special. You know, he was down the count, and he just said, I got a battle. He battled it through and got rewarded with the base hit the other way. Here's Juana Cespedes. He's got an opportunity here in a bases loaded situation and seems like the right man for the job. I'd say so. He's the team leader in RBIs. Time for the right man in the right spot. Bases are loaded here, two down. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Well, right here, he's definitely worked himself into a very difficult situation. He's got the power hitter at the plate, and you got two balls. He's sitting there looking for his pitch to hit. You know he's zeroing in. And there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner. He's gotten himself into a little bit of trouble out here. Middle of the order up in a run scoring situation, and now he might have to challenge him. Going to have to make some good pitches here in there and he's taking him as far as he can go now it's full three and two from the belt the pitch smoked on the ground left side and that is through into left field the base hit one run is scored and this will come in far too late he's in there at third Kevin Segrist is going to take over here in inning number five so it'll be a bullpen game from here on out your attention, please. Now pitching for the Cardinals, number 46, Kevin Segrist. Michael Conforto will be the first one to greet him now as he'll do so with runners at the corners and two out in the inning. Cardinals get the bullpen started here as a right-hander's up and warming. The 0-2 pitch. And a waste pitch there, one and two. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. And he holds off there as the count goes even to the Mets left fielder. It's two and two. From the stretch. And he strikes him out here so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as the side is retired. So they pick up three runs on three hits. No errors. And a couple of men left. We're through five here at the ballpark. The Mets are out on top. Four to nothing. Here's Jed Jerko now. 
He'll start things out against Noah Syndergaard as this inning is underway. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's 2 and 1. Boy, they've been just getting shut down right here. Been a while since they've even had a runner on. So I think it's time to start looking for ways to make some things happen. Drop a bunt, get up on the plate, something. I like how he's mixing up the fastball and the changeup right there. That's how we got the two and two count. I think he comes back with a changeup here. He throws him on the fastball there. Jed Jerko goes down to become the first out in the sixth inning. Striding in once again, Yadier Molina, 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1. Hit hard to the right side. Just foul. He hit that change up hard. Man, he saw it good. Just wasn't able to keep it fair. And he struck him out. So double digits now. 10 strikeouts for him thus far. That's 10 strikeouts for him now. And I'll tell you, he can rack up quite a few more before he's done. Still a lot of game left in this one. Matt Adams will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Number 32, Matt Adams. Bases are empty here with two men out. Now a swing, and he pops him up right up the chute. This may be tough behind the plate. And he will indeed make the play in foul territory to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Cardinals. They trail here four to nothing. Alex Reyes enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number 61, Alex Reyes. Here's Neil Walker. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. Walker lays off there. It's two balls and a strike. And the pitch. Called strike two. That is a filthy combination. High 90s with the fastball and then that nasty curveball. It's almost unhittable, almost unfair to the hitter. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. And Walker will reach. It's a base hit. I like it. Hard line drive on the fastball. Hit off the fastball and good things happen. The first baseman, number 21, Lucas Judah. Ready once again, Lucas Duda, 0 for 2 here to start the afternoon. A runner at first with no outs here. And he will take ball four. First and second now with nobody out. Always tough to issue a free pass, but especially troublesome when you give up a single right before that to start the inning. We'll see if he can figure out a way to wiggle out of this. The 1-1 pitch. Tough one to lay off, called a strike. Good lead there at second. Here's the pitch. Rounded down the third baseline. Sliding stop by Jerko. Hats off to that one. Up next for the Mets. Here's the catcher, Travis Darno. A hit in two tries so far. No. Way outside, nearly to the backstop, two and one. He's set, and the two one pitch takes a knee high fastball. Swing and a little tapper. 
And indeed, he'll take only the out at first as the run comes in to score. Probably wanted more out of that if that was runners in scoring oh, position. But at least he does the job and brings one home. Maybe the next guy can pick up the runner at third now. Drilled right back up the middle. Diaz picks it up. Throw on to Carpenter gets him, and that ends the inning. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. We're through six full. It's the Mets five, and the Cardinals nothing. Welcome back to City Field in Flushing. Getting set for the seventh inning now with the Mets out on top. But first, let's check out the game summary through the first six innings of baseball. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Aledmus Diaz. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Takes a look at a strike over the inside corner. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 1 2. Weakly to the right side, so he stays alive. One thing you try to do as a hitter is figure out what pattern the pitcher is pitching. I can't cover the whole plate. He's done a masterful job of pounding him on the outside half for strikes, and they haven't figured it out yet. And that's a base hit, so the perfect game bid ends in the seventh. And he's going to get to second now with nobody out. Ah, they finally break through for their first hit of the ball game, so the no-hit bid will end right here. Yeah, well, right here's where your catcher comes out and says, take a pause, it's okay, and get him refocused because you don't want the game to spin out of hand now. And he fits great early, but he's got to finish it off now. Ready for another chance? Dexter Fowler. Been a strikeout victim twice in this one. And it looks now like a right hander's begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Granderson is under it. He gets there to put it away, but the runner tags and breaks for third. And he'll get into third here on the fly out, so he's 90 feet away here with one gone. Now batting the first baseman. Here's Matt, Matt Carpenter. Carpenter. 0 for 2 on his line thus far. He's set. Here comes the 1-1 one, one to right field and way out of here. Look at this thing go. Gone into the upper tank. A two-run blast to straightaway right field and even 20 home runs for him now thus far. And it's now a 5-2 game. That was a mistake with location and he drove it out of here. I can't overstate how important this home run is folks. It's not just the two runs. It's what he does to the guys in the dugout. Five to nothing seems pretty desperate but five to two is doable. That changed the whole feel of this game. Into the box now. Randall Gritchick. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Well, that was an impressive swing. A fastball is able to hit a foul ball home run with it, but it got out in front of it a little bit too much. Timing just a tad off. And he struck him out. And there's strikeout number 11 in the ball game. It's now never easy to rebound after right serving fielder. up a two-run shot, but that if that was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. Digging in once again, Steven Piscotti. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. And he'll just get a piece here as this is chopped foul at home plate. I like the pitch right there. Got him to chase a fastball out of the zone. I'd come back with it again. And this is pulled foul as he was way out in front there. Oh, he might have got away with one. Two strike breaking ball that ended up being in the zone. I think he probably wanted that out of the zone, but fortunately, he just fouled it off. Tries the slider to ring him up, but he lays off one and two. 
And he's got another one here. 12 punch outs now in the ball game, and that'll end the inning. But the cards do strike for two, both coming on this two-run dinger. Get up and stretch. It's the Mets five and the Cardinals two. Zach Duke gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seven. Zach Duke. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. He's 0 for 2 with a walk thus far. That's to two ball. balls and two strikes now. Two balls, two strikes. set and the 2-2 pitch and he'll stay alive here but just barely as this ball's chopped foul at the plate and the count holds it two and two Come on. another try at 2-2 now a swing and a chopper foul right at home plate well he fouled that breaking ball off a little bit early timing not quite there had a fastball to pitch before he just got out in front of that breaking ball and this will miss down low in the dirt so he's working full now at three and two well, he needs a shutdown inning right here, and it's not starting the way he wants. He's already down in the count big time. The last thing you want to do is start the inning by walking a guy and turning the momentum back to the other team. Throw to first is in time for the first down. The shortstop, number 13. As so the leadoff Drubal. man set down here for Esdrubal Cabrera. And now pitch on the way. Ah, had him fooled as he swings through the curveball. Two down. That swing tells me he was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two-strike approach either. Five-two, our score as we play inning number seven. In now, Joanna Cespedes. Now a fastball as he just reared up and let that one fly, and the inning is over. Mets go down one, two, three. They're still out in front, five to two. Your Josh Edgen has been summoned now from the bullpen the as he'll do so to start the Number eight. 66, Josh Edgen. Colton Wong will stand in. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. The pitch. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Gloved by Walker. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. Third baseman number three. Here's Jed ben Jerko now. Jerko. Struck out twice thus far, so we'll see if he can fare any better here. Addison Reed gets the call as he'll pitch with match. one gone in the number top of the eight. Addison Reed. We're in the eighth inning now of a five to two ball game. Here's a high foul ball as it finds a lucky fan in the upper deck for a souvenir. Hit it. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. And Granderson will get this one in off the wall. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. There's no question he's been struggling the at the dish four. lately, trying to do Catcher, anything to get himself going. Him. So he's got to feel pretty good after that double. Not to take anything away from him, but I think I could have probably hit that pitch. Yeah, that's one of those gift pitches, not the location he was shooting for. Standing in now. Yadier Molina and this pitch misses for a ball two and one now to Molina we've seen him go down on strikes more than once in this game so this has been a better approach by him at this at bat much more patient and he's gotten himself into a good hitters count looks like a left hander has begun to get loose out in that Mets bullpen and an easy play out there as this is taken for the second out Johnny Peralta has grabbed the bat and moved into the on deck circle so that's going to be the end of the line for Zach Duke. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. Now a swing and he just fouls this one away. Oh, 
out of play. Hard hit ball to second. Walker's got it. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. One left for the Cardinals, and the deficit remains 5-2. to two. Your Brett Cecil will come on to make his 40th Cardinals. appearance this Number season. Brett Cecil. Now at the plate, Michael Conforto. He's two for three with a home run and a double. One pitch is a knuckle curve taken for a called strike two. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And the knuckle curve that time. Got him swinging, and that's the first out. Not a lot of guys throw that knuckle curve, but some guys have a lot of success with it. Some say it has more bite than the traditional curveball, but I think it's more of a feel thing. It just works for certain pitchers, and it worked right there. 0 oh, and 2, here it comes. And that sinker misses at the shoe tops. Ball one. And this is fouled back and out of play. This one's down to third. Jerko showing off his range. In time to first, and there are two away. The first baseman, number 21. Here's Lucas Duda Luka. now. 0 for 2 Duda. with a walk for him so far. Two out, nobody on. And that's swung on and fouled straight back. Here he comes again, 1-2. Swing and a liner toward right center. And that's in for a base hit. Make it a one for three games so far. And a good job to get to it quickly and get it back in. That'll hold him to a two-out single. He just sports that ball off the wall, and now the question will be, should he have continued on or not? He thought about pushing it, I'm sure, but decided to play it safe. It would have been close, but I think this time he's probably right in staying at first. Into the box, David Wright. Line drive to center field. And eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. Mets strand one, and it remains five to two. Jerry Spamilia comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. And that'll bring up Oledmus Diaz. Lifetime against Familia. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. And the pitch on two and one. And he gets ahead with a sinker on the outside. Good pitch right there from the reliever. Tough for hitters to do much with pitches in that location unless they're looking for it. Conforto is there to put it away for route number one. So the leadoff man gone to start at the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Here's Dexter Fowler now. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Now the 0-2 pitch. And this one's tapped foul at home plate. Tell you what, this is the wrong guy to float around with. He's been swinging about really good in this series, and he hasn't got a hit in this game yet. But I'm going to tell you what, I, I wouldn't mess with him. Got him to go down swinging there. Dexter Fowler is sent packing Great for the point. third time today. Well, I'm Carpenter. glad we get another look at that beauty of a pitch right there. You can't spot a sinker in a better location because even if you do get the bat on the ball, there's not a whole lot you can do with that textbook sinker. 
crowd of over 39,000 on their feet. And a hard sinker there, chopped foul at home plate. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. And again, he's unable to keep it fair, but he's putting together quite a battle at the plate. He's ready with the 2-2 pitch. Boy, and he just won't go away as he fights off another pitch and hits it foul right at the plate. Now another 2-2. Hit out towards second. Fielded cleanly by Walker. Throw on to first is going to be in time to get him. And the Mets continue the roll they've been on. Seven straight victories now as this ball game is over. Wow, what a week for these guys. Talk about firing on all cylinders. Winners of an amazing seven games in a row. They say to never question the streak, and these guys aren't. They're just enjoying this ride. Five to two, the final today. Noah Syndergaard earns his league best 14th win, striking out 12 in the process. Jerry's Familia hammers down the save, his 27th of the campaign. So that'll just about do it for us this afternoon. Thanks to Harold Reynolds and Dan Plezak and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. To find out more, head on over to theshownation.com. For the victorious New York Mets. Five runs, seven hits, no errors. They left five minutes. Ground ball to short. This should end it. Lindor sets. He throws. And the Cleveland Indians of 2016 have set the franchise record with their 14th consecutive win. And oh, baby, did they earn it going 19 innings north of the border. You're not kidding. They certainly earned it. That's a comfort, too. And it only took six hours and 13 minutes. Dansby Swanson cracks one to center field. That ball's.